Good evening and welcome. This is Whole and Beautiful. I am Angela D. Oliphant, your host, and I am so glad that you have joined me tonight for a night of information, revelation, and change. Tonight is going to be another phenomenal night for us. I have a guest with me, and um, she is going to be speaking with us shortly, but I want you all to like, to comment, to share this broadcast with everyone that you can because the information that will be on here tonight is something that they want to hear. It's something that they want to um, go back and listen to, and you can do that at 4 p.m. on Saturday. But I want you to call your friends, call your frenemies, call your girlfriends, set up your watch parties, because tonight's show is just going to be awesome, and I'm ready to interview the person that I have with me tonight. So I want you all to tune, chime in, to tune in, to listen in, and then share this broadcast with someone else because it's going to be helpful to everyone who listens because I love to share everyone's story because I say that everyone has a story. So I want to share her story with you tonight, and when we come back, we are going to share with you who I have on here with me tonight. But right now, we're going to take a short Selah moment break. And as we do that, sit back, relax, get yourself together, call up those friends and have them listen in. Let them know that Whole and Beautiful is on and that they want to hear this information on tonight. So stay with me, guys. We will be right back. Hello and welcome. This is Whole and Beautiful. I am Angela D. Oliphant, your host, and I am so glad that you have joined me tonight for a night of information, revelation, and change. Tonight, guys, like I said before, before we even went to the break, we have a guest with us on tonight. I have a guest here, and I am so excited that she has accepted my invitation to be with us here on tonight. Um, the guest that I have tonight, she is a social worker from Aiken, South Carolina. She earned her BSW from Winthrop University in 2014. In 2017, she earned her MSW from Johnson C. Smith University. Her passion continues to be working with children in need. She enjoys spending time with her family and her puppy. She is a small business owner as well and enjoys making items such as candles for her business. Guys, I want you, my whole and beautiful nation, to help me welcome Jamie Harris to the show. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Hey, Miss Angie. I'm doing good. How are you? I am doing well. I'm so glad that you accepted my invitation to come on tonight. It's um, going to be an awesome I show. You. Can you say that again? I said I appreciate the invite. Well, that is great. Um, Jamie, I told everyone a little bit about you, but I want you to share with everyone a little bit about Jamie Harris and who she is. I am um, definitely on a journey um, that aligns with the um, theme of your show. Um, I'm trying to get to a place of, um, you know, just healing, being positive, um, understanding myself. Um, I'm, I definitely understand it's a continuous journey, but I'm on it. Um, just trying to be peaceful and happy. Um, that's my goal right now, and to help others. That is awesome. In your um, bio, you were you said in here that. Um, that you earned your BSW from Winthrop University and your MSW from Johnson C. Smith. Can you tell the listeners what a BSW and an MSW is? Yes. Um, I went to Winthrop University for undergrad, and I got my Bachelor of Social Work. Um, but after getting my Bachelor of Social Work, 
uh, my best friend and I decided to go ahead and get our master's in social work. Um, so we wanted to experience the HBCU. We told Johnson C. Smith um, at that time, of course, we didn't live on campus, but it was still a good experience um, to go to HBCU for higher education. Okay. So you, um, how long have you been working in social work? I started working in social work in 2013 um, before I earned my bachelor's degree. I was able to, I was privileged to work at a group home um, in Rock Hill, South Carolina called the Children's Attention Home. Um, that was my first full-time job in I thoroughly enjoy working with my coworkers there. I still keep in contact with the majority of them. And the children there um, just really opened my eyes to what I wanted to do as a career. Um, so I'll say, ooh, it's 2028 years? I've been in the social work field for eight uh-huh. years? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you're loving what you do. I, I do. Um, I wake up and I'm happy um, to go to work, and that's a blessing all in itself. Yes, that is, because a lot of people don't wake up happy, ready to go to work. They they dread every morning they get up to go to work, and to know that you're excited about being there and going, that is a blessing to be that way. Um, so you see social work as being your your career, or yes, are, um, are you working in it now or changing out? I'm I'm working in it now. I'm um I'm definitely in it. Um, I still work with children, but not in the foster care population. Um, I work in a different population now, but still working with the same um not the same children. Still working with children. Um, still working with families. Um, ensuring the safety of children. Um, and this is definitely something that I can see myself retiring from. Um, as you know, I'm also an entrepreneur, so that's my that's my baby too. But I do love social work, so I can no matter what I do, I'm going to incorporate helping others in some type of way. Uh, I think that's just a big part of my life. That's awesome. That is awesome to see. Um, so, would you like to start like your own foundation for children? Is that something that you um, have thought about? I haven't thought about it much. Um, I I would like to eventually or at least to continue to give back um, in some form after I decide to retire from social work. Um, But I haven't figured out exactly what I want to do yet. But it's going to be something. Okay. Um, You said that you're no longer with the – foster care population, what area do you work in now with children? Um, now I work with families, children and families, okay. um, in in home services. So you work with the children and families. Is that like um, sitting down as like a um, mediator with the family, or how does that work? Yes, um, pretty much that's what it is, just ensuring that, parents have the resources that they need to properly care for the child and that the child feels safe, Um, more so teaching the children and the families how to appropriately live together. That's what I would say. Okay. And do you, um, with the job that you're in now, do they offer, like, classes for those families or do they go out into the community to teach or to set up, like, um, I would say, like, seminars or either workshops for families to attend? All of the above. I work for um, the Department of Social Services, so um, Mm -hmm. they make sure that the family has the appropriate resources um, to learn new things, as well as the children um, being able to make it to certain appointments that they need um, that the parents probably weren't aware of before. Um, So it's definitely a pleasure to work for the organization because they do care so much and they look at families holistically and they look at what the parents are doing right as well and not just getting on the parents for what it is that they need to improve. So I definitely admire the strength-based approach that the organization uses. Okay. 
So um, have you, like, independently gone out to maybe teach a class or done a seminar or anything for it? For any organization, or is that something that's just within the um, DSS that you work with? Um, I have at an internship. Um, I interned at different places um, over the years. I can't believe it's been eight years in social work, but I've interned <laughs> at different places. And <laughs> at times, I have um, had the privilege of teaching parents different things. Um, one of the things that stuck out the most. It was an adoption agency that I interned at, and um, I learned a lot about adoption and foster care there, and I also learned that it was majority um, children of color who were getting adopted, and the majority of people adopting children at the time were um, Caucasian people. So I actually got the chance to speak with a group of um, potential adoptive parents about proper hair care um, for children of color and different things of that nature, and skin care. Um, so it's definitely fascinating. Um, and it's, I appreciate the fact that we taught people to accept differences and look at it as a right. learning ability. That is awesome because I never knew that that was out there for, um, for like, adoptive parents because I would see where um, – maybe a, a Caucasian family would adopt an African-American child or vice versa. And I was like, okay, they need, I mean, it. I don't have like, like this, like discrimination thing, but I was like, I wanted to know, it's like, how do you care for them or how do you do certain things? Because certain things are different, like you said, with hair care, skin care, and different things. And it's all because we're just different. Right. Um, but that's, that's good to know that they have classes there to instruct different families so that they know how to care for each child that they do adopt because you want right. the child to be adopted. Yeah. So that that's awesome. I never knew that. I'm glad for that information. Um, mm-hmm. With the situations and, like, and circumstances that you see children in, like, um, what do you feel – it's like the greatest challenge for for the child. I think the greatest challenge for a child is understanding that no matter what, they deserve to be treated with respect. And I think sometimes children blame themselves for the mistakes of their parents. Okay, yeah, because even grown children do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> they, <laughs> They will blame themselves for the for the mistakes of their parents. That is something because we I see that a lot. Like I said, and a lot of grown people just talking to them or just listening to them, and they will revert back to something where it's like they they take on what their parents did or they still living in that past thing. Right. When they can, where you can make a choice to be different because you. You see kids in different situations and different circumstances, but you can put you can put two children in the same situation and one comes out and excels. And if they're in a bad situation, one may come out and excel, the other one comes out and, and um, does not. And I look at it as it being a choice. Um, right. I sp- I spoke to um, someone recently, and she was telling me about twins who grew up in the same household where their father was an alcoholic and he was abusive, but one one of the um, twins ended up in jail, but the other twin ended up being in social work and helping other children. And when oh, wow. they, asked them, they asked them why, you know, you know, with you being growing up in the situation you were in, the ex, the one that was in jail, how did you end up here? And he was saying, because of my situation, because of where the way I grew up, this is the way what he was asking, what would you expect of me? This is the way it was going to be. But then they asked the other twin who was a social worker and asked him the same question, and he was like, growing up in the home that I grew up in, what would you expect of me? So they both had that same answer, but they both turned out different. 
Mm-hmm. And, and I, I that amazed right. me. Say that again. I think you're right. I think you do have to make the choice to be different and to heal from your situation. I think sometimes um, as people, it's easier for us to be like, okay, well, this is this is how I am. This is how my family was. This is in my blood. Instead of saying, okay, this is where I came from. Let me do something different. Let me make a choice to be better. Let me make a choice to do better for my future family or even myself. Um, so I, I definitely agree with you. You have to make a choice to do better, and you also have to know that there is better. Yeah, you do. You have to be exposed to that, and that's why I'm, at, I'm excited about the things that you were saying because it's like those opportunities are available to families because a lot of times they don't know that that those opportunities are out there for them to learn and for them to to grow as a family. And all the time, we sometimes we think that something has to be majorly wrong in our homes or with our children in order for us to get help. But even in a family that we deem to be a pretty good family, they may just need a little bit of help as in guidance of what to do and what not to do and how to, to work together as a family. Right. So... And that that's that's awesome to know that those classes and seminars and different things are available. Now, are those things, like, open to, like, the community as a whole, or is it with the, the particular families that they're working with? So when I was at that agency, that was specifically for the families that they were working with. Okay. So that would be something. To, to have it um to have things open up where it can be for families as a whole. I think we need that all the way around because sometimes we people step into like marriages and they step into um these families and they just don't know how to function. They could be a good family but they just don't know how to function together and that guidance would be Great, it would be extraordinary to have that open. So my whole and beautiful nation, y'all hear me out there? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> can step up, and that's the area where um, we really need families to know how to work together and how to move together because I have seen how how sometimes outside of families, people who are friends are more family than people who are family. Right. Uh, and it would be good to have the tools if people are willing to use, utilize those tools so that they can work together better as as a family unit. Um, I've seen a lot, Jamie, where like just watching the news and listening to different people who have called me and talked to me, and they are saying like um, like a 12-year-old has committed suicide or a 10-year-old has committed suicide. What um, do you think, in your opinion, is causing like a rise in younger children even thinking about suicide? When I was that age, I, I, and I'm way older because I'm in my 50s, but um, <laughs> that was not something that I even like thought of. That didn't enter my mind about ending my life at 10 you know, or at 12. What do you, in your opinion, feel like are some of the um, stressors or what, what is going on with the children that they would even think in that manner? I honestly don't know because whenever I see those stories, I also think about, like, you know, what could have been done to prevent that? Were there signs that the children displayed that they weren't okay? Um was it something going on that they just didn't think they can handle? Like I, I also that that's a that's a touchy um, subject for me. Suicide and general, right. like I just I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know. It's it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's it's heartbreaking for anybody, especially a child and. Not only the child, but like you know, the effects that it has on like their friends or their families or even their classmates. Um, right, it's a scary thought. 
Yeah, because I was, it really, it it really, like you say, it hits your heart to see that. And I was like, wow, you know, this is happening with younger kids, and that's something that never never really even crossed my mind as, as being that young of an age. And that is something to be, to pay attention, I guess, like you were saying, too, to see if there are any signs there because sometimes we don't see the signs because people are so busy. And, and, they're, and that they're... made me think. Go ahead. Uh, I was I was just going to say it made me think about um, another agency that I once worked with. We used to encourage parents um, to, like, lock up items such as knives and ensure that they had, like, guns locked up for um, safety reasons. And, you know, some right. people would be like, well, I didn't have to do that when I was a kid. And it's like, you know, that's that's understandable. But it's a different time now. And that those are precautions that you need to take, especially if you are worried um, that something like that is going to happen. So limiting access to um, certain items and pills, and that's a whole other conversation. But um, <laughs> it's definitely important to ensure the safety of the home Right, because it just because back in the day, you know, a lot of people didn't have to do that. They may have to do it now, and you, it's really like they do have to pay attention to their children and pay attention to the things that they're saying and, and how they're acting because you, you pick up on certain things if you're paying attention. Um, sometimes, sometimes we can... Um, be like overbearing with the attention, you know. Um, but sometimes we just need to to just watch and see their routines and stuff, and see sometimes things may change, or sometimes they may they may be sad, or sometimes other things may be going on. But my hope, my prayer is that if it is dealing with the attention, that they will pay attention and see what's going on with the children because we don't need to lose children that way. We don't need to lose children any kind of way, but that is like just, it's heartbreaking to see that, I mean, you haven't even lived really like at 10, you know. At 12, you you still got your whole life ahead of you. So that would, um, that is just, it is, it's heartbreaking to see, but, Parents, if you're out there and you're listening, pay attention to your children. Pay attention to their routines. Pay attention to what they are doing and, and their conversations. And when they speak to you about different things or they say different things, check it out. Go check the thing out and see what's actually going on at school or in the neighborhood or whatever to make sure that your child is well taken care of. Um what advice, Jamie, would you give to parent, parents or guardians concerning their children? Like, what is the overall thing that you see that may be consistent in each um, maybe case that you work with or, or children that you work with? What is some general information or general advice that you could give to um, parents or guardians concerning the children? Um. Uh, it's a few things. The first thing that I would say is definitely make sure no matter what your child is going through, you love them through it. Um, I feel like a lot of children make mistakes, as all humans do, and when they make those mistakes, sometimes parents can overreact, and it makes the child shut down and not go to them again. Um, so as opposed to overreacting, maybe, like, the parent can develop a better way to deal with the stress that they're trying to send them to <laughs> and, you know, talk to an adult about that instead of, you know, cursing at the child or reacting to the child in a negative way, just speaking with the child calmly, being being open to open communication of what's going on in their lives and loving the child unconditionally. Um, I think that would be beneficial as well as being aware of who your children are around. Yes, yes, and that that right there 
the la- the um, latter part of what you just said of being conscious of who they are around. Sometimes we, well, when I like I was saying, I, I grew up in a whole different time, so um, everybody knew everybody. Everybody in the neighborhood where I lived, they knew everybody. So if I said that I was at this person's house, my mom knew who that was. Um, in today's time, sometimes it's not that. It's not like that. It's totally different. Sometimes we have neighbors, and people don't even know who their neighbors are. Um, right. So it's like you you have to pay attention to who your children are around, and sometimes when you see their behavior change, you can check who they're who they're hanging around because sometimes they have that much influence on your child where they they'll start to change things that they do because of who they hang around. So be conscious of that. Um, what are some signs do you think that um, a child may display where you can say, okay, well, this child may be in trouble or this, or this family may need, um, may need some type of assistance or help in um, different areas? Do you know of any, like, signs that we maybe should be looking for, even if with our own family members, if we see certain things that are happening? Um, I'll definitely say if a child is, like, really happy and outgoing, in my experience, um, if they go from that to just isolating themselves, I think it would be a good time to check in and just, you know, even if, you don't, if, if yeah. they don't tell you what's going on at that moment, just letting them know, like, hey, you know, when you're ready, I'm here. Um, so just having that open line of communication to where, and, let, and again, it goes back to unconditional love, um, especially as teenagers. Like, I remember being a moody teenager and, you know, just yeah. just being a teen, that's hard enough in itself. Uh, so it could just be signs of growing up, but definitely um, common interest in making sure that you're aware of what's going on and the differences in their moods and keeping that open line of non-judgmental communication. Not to say don't have rules. Rules are definitely needed, right. especially for teenagers. But to say if they do break a rule, be calm enough to let them talk to you about it so you can prevent that from happening on a larger scale in the future. Okay, got it. Um Jamie, with your um, I wanted to ask you this: What do you feel is your greatest accomplishment to date, as of today's date? What do you feel is your greatest accomplishment? I was just talking to my mom about this earlier. Um, I would say, as of today's date, my greatest accomplishment is keeping my that business open for a year. We just came up on a year, and I don't think it hit me until I was talking to my mom this morning. I was like, Mom, oh, my God, I kept my business open for a year. She was like, that's major. Like, a lot of businesses aren't <laughs> surviving right now. I was like, I, I didn't realize that I was just so happy. Um, so I'll definitely say to, to date that's my greatest thing just because it's, it's not necessarily – completely out of the scope of social work, but due to the pandemic, I was able to be a little more creative with my time, and I discovered doing some things that I love that I hadn't probably done since high school, so just creating art or trying to create a new product or something like that. So I would say running a business successfully. Now, that is awesome. That is awesome because I see y'all out there working your business too. So even during the pandemic, it's like you you still pressed and pushed forward, and that is awesome. That is great. Congratulations on your year. Thank you, Miss That is awesome. <laughs> that is so awesome. Um, I wanted to ask you also, if you were able to go back in time, and we were just talking about being that moody teenager, if you were able to go back in time 
being the age you, you are now, and speak to the 13-year-old Jamie, what type of advice would you give to her? Oh, so much. <laughs> so much. So much. I think the first thing that I would say to her would to be live a little more. And by live a little more, I mean enjoy your youth. Um, not to say I'm not young, which is funny because some people tell me I'm not now um, because I'm about to turn 30. But I would definitely travel more, and I wouldn't. I, I, I won't say I wouldn't work as hard. I definitely would work hard still because I love how that helped me at this point in my life. But I would take more vacations, and I would, quote, unquote, stop to smell the flowers more, as certain people would say. <laughs> say, slow everything down. Don't be in a hurry. <laughs> yeah. And my brother used to tell me that all the time when I was in college, because when I was in college, I was like, okay, I got to work, save money, because I want to do this, I want to do that. And even since I was in, like, third grade, I remember I would, like, draw pictures in my house, but it wasn't, like, the regular pictures. It would be, like, a blueprint kind of. Yeah. And, I was just <laughs> and it, it was a good thing, but I definitely wish I would have, you know, traveled more or experienced more in in that way. But you still have time. You're still young. It's like... <laughs> You still can get out there and do it. It's like you got all this time to travel and stuff, and you got your own business now. So it's like you can get on out there and travel and set up some some dates for yourself and be like, okay, this during this year I'm going to travel and go this place and plan for it. Because yes. you're, still, you're still able to do all of that, which is awesome. It is great because you've accomplished so much in just this, like, small amount of time. And it's been eight years that you've been working in social work. So that in itself is just awesome because not many people will come out of college and then use what they learned in college and have their their career, have their job. A lot of people will go to college, get all of that, and get out and be like, I don't want to do this, you know, (laughs) And they they switch up the whole thing. But for you to have gone to college for what you wanted and graduated and get up every morning and be happy about going to work, that is a blessing in itself. And then for you to have started your own business and you're able to work that business and it's been a year and you're still open and still thriving and moving forward, that is great also. Can you – um? Give everyone the name of your business and how they can contact you if they would like to, like, purchase candles, because I know you do candles. I know you do jewelry. If um, they want to get in contact with you, how would they do that? Um, yes, the name of my business is Scorpiana's LLC, and I actually have a business partner. Her name is Kelly McQueen. Um we we do we do candles and she does sea moss gel and um, body butters which are amazing and a couple of other products too. We can be found on Facebook um, at Scorpionas LLC and on Instagram at Scorpionas LLC. Wow! I said I have to um, try some of the body butters. I didn't know y'all did body butters too. So I have to um, see. And she um she's actually in school to be an esthetician. Um, so and she she knows her stuff, like health, beauty, that's that's her thing and she's great at it. Um, so I definitely trust her um with any product she makes. And she she makes the body butter, like from scratch. Wow. Now that is awesome. I said, where do you see your business, let's say, in, in by next year this time? You'll be working on two years. What um, Do y'all have any um, any plans now? I do see that y'all are out and about and um, going different places. Are y'all planning anything um, as far as, like, you're going to keep it, like, online or, or going out to sell, or are you trying to get, like, a brick-and-mortar building? 
Um, that's actually something we were talking about today, but we weren't talking about next year. We were talking about, like, five years from now. Um, okay. But I definitely can see us having a physical location. Um, but, yeah, you're right. Like, right now we've been going to the – um, flea markets in Columbia and the Freedom Market in Charlotte, which is a group we're a part of. Um, it's different black vendors who come together, um, and it's a whole bunch of different things that we all sell, from funnel cakes to um, body oils, body butters, um, bracelets. Like, it's really awesome. Um, but let's be honest, this time next year, um, I think we want to take a more holistic approach all the way around um, and focus on health as well as, you know, a spiritual journey. But like this, like you said earlier, um, the whole person, being whole, being beautiful, being comfortable in yourself. Uh, so that's definitely a major goal and to offer more products and services um, to our followers and customers. Okay, and that that will be that'll be awesome. We, are y'all available? Maybe to um, like with with what you all know, like with what your business partner knows, and then the different things that that you know coming out of social work, and then even the candles and stuff that you do, and all of that. Are y'all available to even go and maybe talk to a group? of ladies, let's say they're having a girl's night out or they're having a, a, um, some type of seminar, some type of workshop, are y'all available to be vendors there? Are you open to that or are you um, doing anything to that nature? Oh, most definitely. We're open to every opportunity for growth and to help people grow. Um, so that's an, another thing about our business. We try to make it as cost um, effective as possible, not only for us, but for our clients, because we really, she's a social worker as well. She's actually the person I was talking about who I went to grad school with. Um, okay. So when people is in our heart, that's like our core is to make sure to be there for other people, to be like that person that somebody can come to, um, even if it's just like an encouraging word. Um, we try to be there for people and accept people for who they are um, on every level and just encourage growth. Wow. It sounds awesome. I mean, y'all are doing really good, and you went to school together. Now you're doing a business together. That is awesome because to see um, friendships like that, that where people are working together and staying with each other, you know, because a lot of times we deem somebody to be a friend and they're not really a friend, but to see y'all working together and to see that you are still together, that is awesome and that is great. I'm looking forward to seeing what is going to happen with, with Jamie. I was like, I'm looking forward to to seeing what all will happen in your life and how things are going to come together because it's like you you're making a mark and you um you're making that mark in the earth where everything is going to be seen and that's awesome because it's going to be seen not because you want it to be seen it'll be seen because of what you're doing for people and it will applaud it for what you're doing for people it's going to be awesome i am so excited to see how everything is going to come together so we will be looking out for you Jamie and we'll be um, looking for what you're going to be doing now, guys. If you want to contact her, remember to to contact her, and we're going to put her information down in the comment section of this show, and her information will be there. And I want you to contact her if you need candles, body butters, if you want to do a seminar, if you want to do a workshop. If you have something going on and you say, hey, I need them to be a vendor, at my function, then call, send them an email, send them um, a message and let them know so that they can come and be a part of your event. And you may can even get them to come in and just talk and just share with some things on how to take care of your skin and how to do these different things so that you can be better with your health. 
which is awesome. Jamie, I am so glad that you agreed to join me tonight. I am so glad that we had this conversation. And I look forward to having you back and um, and hearing your story as it unfolds. We will plan to have you back soon, maybe like within maybe about six months or so or a year, and see where Jamie is, like what happened there and what's going on with you in the following year. That sounds great. And, Ms. Angie, thank you so much. I'm proud of you, too. And I really appreciate you giving me this opportunity. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Guys, I am so glad that you have joined me tonight for another night of Whole and Beautiful. This has been awesome, and I am so looking forward to all the comments and all the shares and the likes and, and the emails. Send me an email at wholebeautiful at gmail.com. If you don't get Jamie's information, send me an email at wholebeautiful at gmail.com, and I will get the information to her. Go out and support her business, support her as she's moving forward in life, and um, we just want to be a support all the way around. So, guys, listen on tomorrow at 4 p.m. If you didn't catch the whole interview, go back and listen tomorrow at 4 p.m. Saturday, 4 p.m. It would play again. And invite somebody else in to listen. Let them hear the wisdom. Let them hear the information so that they can bring about a revelation and a change in their own lives. Until we meet again next Friday at 7 p.m., I am Angela D. Oliphant, allowing you to see, to hear, and to know that whole and beautiful is not just your destination, guys. It is most definitely your journey. Until we meet again, good night.